here's a moral dilemma that a lot of people talk about. It's called the trolley problem. So you're standing beside uh, a, tr a train track, and a train comes hurtling down. It's out of control. Nobody can stop it. It's heading down the track, and if you do nothing, it's going to head off on a, uh, a track to the left where there are five people, um, five workmen working on the track and they're in a deep valley and they can't get out of the way because the, the walls go straight up on either side of the track and if nothing happens, um, the train will kill all those five people. But there is a switch um, right beside the track and you're right beside the switch and you could change the, the track so the train will go off to the right. And if you do that, um, the five people will be saved, but there's another worker working on the right-hand track, and he'll be killed. And the question is, is it permissible for you to turn the switch and um, cause the train to go off to the right-hand track where it'll kill the one person? And when people are asked about this, most people, not everybody, but most people say it is permissible to turn the trolley because you're um, saving uh, five people's lives at the cost of only one. So if, if all that mattered was how many lives were saved, it would be obviously be the right thing to do. But it's actually surprising that it's the right thing to do, because most of us don't think that what matters is only the number of people who are saved, because in the other sort of famous ver uh, variant of this case, the train is rattling down the track, uh, if you do nothing, it's going to go off to the left and kill the five people. You can't um, switch the train, but you're up on a bridge above the track, and there's a very fat man in front of you. And if you throw the fat man off the bridge, and he lands on top of the tr on, on the track, he'll stop the train, and the five people won't be killed, because the train won't reach them. Now, if you ask most people, are you permitted to throw the fat man off the, tra off the bridge, they'll say no. Now that's a case where you would save five lives at the cost of one, and it's not permitted. Um, so why is it not permitted? I mean, a, an intuitive answer would be that, well, if you don't throw the fat man, the train will go off to the left, and five people will be killed, but you won't have killed them. You won't have actively intervened in a way that resulted in their deaths. But if you throw the fat man off the bridge, somebody will die, namely the fat man, but he'll die as a result of what you actively did. You didn't just stand back and let things happen. You actively caused somebody's death. And that's why it's wrong to throw the fat man off the bridge. And what makes the original trolley problem a dilemma is that it looks as if the same reasoning applies in that case. Because if you just stand back and do nothing, the five people will be killed. Uh, you didn't cause their deaths. But if you, t if you m switch the switch, then you're actively intervening. You're causing the train to go off in the other direction and kill the one. And if actively causing one to save f five isn't permitted when you throw the fat man off the bridge, why is it permitted um, when you merely switch the train? Is there an actual answer? Well, there's not an answer that everybody's happy with because an answer has to not work has to work not only for those two examples but for any other complicated variations that we could think up. And I don't think anybody's got an answer that works for all the complicated variations. But an answer that works for this one says that what matters isn't so much whether you actively cause the death or merely allow it to happen. What matters is your state of mind. And the, the question is, when the one person dies, do you intend his death as a means to saving the five? In other words, are you saving the five by killing the one? Now, if you throw the fat man in front of the train, that's true. You're saving the five by um, throwing the fat man in front of the train and doing, doing something that results in his death. It's got to be, it's part of your plan that the fat man lands on the, the track and is hit by the train. If that doesn't happen, the five aren't going to be saved. Um, so there, you intend the death of the one, or at least, and now we're getting into tricky issues, but at least you intend the fat man's being hit by the train as a means to saving the five. But when you turn the trolley, you don't save the five by killing the one. You save the five by turning the train away from the track that they're on. And you would, it would be, you'd be every bit as effective in saving the five if there were nobody on the right-hand track. It's not part of your plan that the first one dies. If you could somehow, that, that the one dies. If you could somehow stop him from being killed, you'd be delighted to do that. Um, his death is not something you intend as a means to your goal. It's a foreseen but unintended side effect of 
um, your effort to achieve your goal. Or in the terminology that's used in warfare and people will be familiar with, his death is collateral damage. Collateral damage because it's something that happens on the side. It's a side effect. It's not part of your plan. So, you know, the initial thought about the trolley problem is that um, the reason you're not permitted to throw the fat man is because then you're actively causing his death. But it doesn't seem that that can be the right explanation because then it would be wrong to switch the trolley from the left-hand track to the right. Then you're actively doing something. You're not just standing there. You're actually actively changing things with the result that the one gets killed. And at least a possible explanation that what matters is not whether you're actively um, causing someone's death, but whether you intend their death as a means to your goal.